what's up guys welcome back to the channel in this tutorial we were, we are going to make this cool uh, force field effect in a Gen gen 5's niagara system so before we dive in make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and so let's jump into it and get started with the setup First of all subscribe my youtube channel and also click on bell icon so you will receive all new video notification. To start this so first I will click uh, here I create a folder for field. Okay so I'll just make a new material. It's mostly material based so M and I'll call it uh, field and let's uh, let's let's take a director here okay and let's also create a before material i'll create the niagara call it ns for speed and open this first thing i will take this manual uh, emitter and i'll just take one particle burst one particle it will not die and it will just spawn once so it will spawn once and it will not die so life is infinite then instead of a sprite i will take this as mesh and in the mesh i need a sphere cool and i'll make this local and let's drag it into the viewport so that sphere is very small so i'll just make the mass size to maybe 10 yeah but it is not too big i think 8 or 7 will work yeah 7 will work okay so this is my setup now i will make the material for it so let me just save this also let me save all the this for Okay, so now I'll open the material and here we have also a sphere. We can use the planer, but we will use sphere. So first thing I'll make this, you can make this like additive or transparent. Maybe I'll make this transparent and lit to side it. First thing I'll take the fin nail. And if I preview, this is how it looks. So first thing I'll use the power. This. And then uh, I'll use two power actually. This one may be 1.2, and this one will be three. So three means if I'll make it three, it's just the edges here on uh, on this sphere, and this one is little wider. So now this one I will multiply it maybe 0.2, and then I will add this edge on it. If I preview now. We have the edge and this so we can avoid this uh, power also we can just make it one okay so this is thing what i'll use then i'll take the particle color this will go here directly and this thing will go to opacity but with multiplication with multiply of alpha and if i just stop reviewing it this is what we have but we need some uh, lines on it let me make this little more darker. We need some lines on it. So if you have a sphere that has a good UVs, you can use texture coordinate. If not, then you can use world position. So in this case, I will use texture coordinate. And if I take the mask shift C, that is a shortcut. And I'll take the green channel. If I preview, this is what we have if you want to repeat it multiple times you can multiply and then take a frag and in the multiply you put the values it will repeat that times so maybe like 10 so now this gradient will repeat 10 times like this or we need actually so much like not 550 maybe and then we need this lines very uh, like uh, sharp not faded so we can use this tap node 
five to you. Five. This. And I think we can use some red. So now we will multiply this thing, but I will not use 100% black and white. Uh, first, I will uh, add some value in it. So that black will not be black, that will be like uh, if I add 0.1. So it will be white and gray. See, now I will multiply it with the opacity. So, I'll make dynamic parameter for this number of lines. You can call it preps. I'll put 50 for now, or maybe 100. Whatever. So, our material is almost done. This one, so I'll just save it. Now, I'll browse this and in the material in the Niagara, go here in the renderer and overwrite the material. And choose your material. Now I'll take the color uh, maybe bluish. Huh? Saturate maybe this one. Yeah, looks better. Now this is how it looks. We can make it a little brighter, although maybe five. Yeah, looks. Now two things. First, these lines are very thick, uh, so I will make a dynamic parameter and make it maybe 100 to 100. Yeah, now it looks maybe 150. Cool. Second thing, I want a edge on the interaction with the ground. So for that, I'll go to the material. We just have to take the depth fade, invert this. And then add it on the opacity. And this fade distance is the 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 distance of uh, uh, like fading of thickness of uh, the edge. So I'll just save it. So now here, if I go to the second parameter, let me show you. you know, the second parameter, which is the edge, so we can use this much, I think. Cool. The next thing I will add maybe distortion in it a little bit. So for that, select your material and go here, type refraction and search this and index refraction. And I will just take the fresnel. So I'll just use lerp and take this fresnel here. A is one and B is a parameter and that will go here. And I'll make, let's name these. So this is interaction edge and next one is a refraction. So I'll save again. Now if I go here and I'll show you refraction value. See, we can increase or decrease this. I think this much is enough. It's just making this the part distort and looks nice. Uh, or maybe a little bit. Yeah, this much is enough. The second thing I'll do, I'll duplicate this and paste, and I'll make the size maybe eight. I'll make the opacity maybe just one. Eight is too much. Seven point two. I don't want height, so I'll just make this non-uniform. I'll make this uh, seven, and this one seven point. 7.2. Yeah. So I'm not changing height, just the width like this. Maybe still um, little bit. Cool. You can do that one more time. Copy paste. And I'll make this this time 7.5, 7.5, and opacity even low. So we have. So we have three layers. Equally distribution. Cool. Next thing you can add little particles and some uh, some rings here. So for the ring I have some material so I will just use that maybe. 
So I'll just duplicate this one more time. And this time I'll take the sprite and just search me the, search, let me search the ring. I'll show you. Hold up. Like this. You can see the materials quite simple. I have a radial. I have a radial and using sign you can see all the math and it's ring. So I'll just use this. It has dynamic parameter for the thickness. So here I will use that ring dynamic parameter for the thickness. Make it bright. And I want to align it on the ground. So I will use custom alignment, custom facing vector. And then here align to mesh orientation. And instead of X, I'll take the Z. We need actually solve this thing. Now fix. And now if you see the size, it's very small. So we don't need this, we need size here. And thickness. This is now here, we need it to down here. So, what I'll do, you can just offset it. You can just move it here. And I'll make it a little more brighter, maybe 50. Cool. And now I will use actually multiples. Maybe I'll use uh, two. And in the size, this is 299, 300. I'll use curve here. And here I will use execution index. So if execution index is zero, uh, let's say 300 size. And if execution index is one, then we can change the size to 200 or maybe 150. Yeah, cool. Cool. Uh, then we can add some internal particles rotating around. So I will uh, again take this. And this time what I'll do, I'll delete the sprite render, take it again with the radial material. I don't need this, this, and also I need life. And it should infinitely spawn. And I need a spawn rate actually. Maybe 50 particles and size maybe for now 5 and 10. Okay. And then I need a sphere uh, location. And red size and let me check with all the elements we need to move it up so i will just use it here in the offset mode size maybe 150 and then we can add little mid uh, vortex course not much but will also pull so they will not go out much although they are still going so we can use drag pull and size I think five and one or maybe one and three and just take the size in and out so I'll take the size curve and I'll just use this. Let me just save again. Yeah. Cool. We can use a less vortex, maybe 100. And then we need to also make the pull 100. And I think drag is too much, maybe 0.5. Yeah. 
and I'll also reduce spawn rate maybe 20. So not much. So I think uh, that looks cool. But one more thing I need. In the material, I these these lines I added at the very end, but I wanted uh, I wanted it to fade also. So instead of adding these, uh, I want to fade it from the here. So what I'll do after multiplying it, uh, let me just check. This is you know, saturate actually. I wanted it to fade from here also. What I'll do, I'll take one more power here and just use two and multiply these lines with that power. And let me check. Yeah, now it's fading, and then I'll multiply it. Save it. Now it improved it so much. Uh, something I will change in here. First thing is this is too bright. This one, maybe three, and then these rest two layers. This is 0.5. I'll make it 0.2, and this is 0.2. I'll make it 0.1. Yeah. Then one more thing I need to add. So this is particles. I'll copy and paste again. And this time what I'll do in this one, let's say I want like 500 particles in this. And I don't need vortex actually. And in the 500 particles, I just need it on the edge, on the surface. I think I need very small size, maybe point one. Yeah, this thing I wanted. But 500 particles too much, maybe 100. Yeah, so I really liked it. You can also add a light if you want. Make the environment light it is darker. So this is it. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Keep learning and bye bye.